Hey guys, welcome to Wooster, Ohio. I am here with Ruben. Is it Schleyball? Schleyball engine. Schle Ruben Schleyball, yes. Okay. And you guys uh, hosted us last night in your beautiful shop. So tell us a little bit about your incredible business up here. My dad bought the business in 1978, started business in 1979, and it just grew. And he just always felt that customer service is the most important thing. Just treat the customers the way you want to be treated. And that's what we've done. And we haven't changed that because we were taught that. And that's part of our culture. We're Christians, but our way of life, we practice what we preach and we haven't changed but in the last 20 years we've seen a lot of people come in to our business and just tell us thank you for just treating us and we haven't changed but a lot of the world has changed a lot of business just don't have customer service they make you feel like they're doing you a favor to come in yet they're not if you don't have customers your doors aren't swinging you're not going to be in business and we really haven't changed but the rest of the world has we had a gentleman on the show earlier that was telling us about kfc that's your model can you explain a little bit is that chicken or no it's not kentucky fried chicken it's <laughs> kingdom which is christ family and customers so in our business if you want a day off i don't care what time of the year it is if it's for a funeral so it's kingdom focused it's family that's where the kfc comes in and then customers is number three customers is up there but kingdom comes first family comes second after that it's business and we try to focus on that. But our employees do respect and they know that we're busy and we ask them not to take vacations in the spring. Of course. But we give them their times off as they need it. As we don't hardly say no, but they also respect us for that. And we have absolutely wonderful employees. That's why we can do what we do. But we try to treat them right and we treat them as they treat us. That's fantastic. So. You're the number one Toro dealer in the United States, is that correct? Yes, as of right now, but there's some others right there. We're just neck and neck, but it's yeah, that's nothing to brag about. It's a blessing. But you got there from taking care of the customer and correct. gaining that reputation. I was yes. interviewing a gentleman this morning, and he says, we don't mind driving an hour out of the way because we know it's going to be a trustworthy experience. We, and we'll drop everything we're doing. If a landscaper pulls in and that equipment was purchased from us, we will fix it immediately. We'll just drop everything. And there's numerous employees in the back, and they'll drop everything they're doing. We have other hoists for people with emergency services, and they just come in, and they'll get it done, and they'll be back on the road. That is fantastic. And I saw your shop last night. It's very large, clean, organized. It looks like the repair side of things is very efficient. It has to be. There's just no option. We have monthly employee meetings where we sit down. We'll stop everything we're doing. And there's 20 some of us in a room and everybody gets a turn to talk. Do you have anything? Do you see where we can improve? What can we do? And then everybody gets a turn. And that's where a lot of our ideas come from, just to try to be more efficient, be better at what we do. And everybody gets along. There's nobody picking on everybody. We just, as a team, we just don't have room for people bickering at each other or not getting along. Everybody helps each other. How many employees do you all have? And at our location, there's right around, I think there's 20 in the low 20s with everybody. With employee-wise would be probably 19, 20, then Willis, Josh, and I, my son and my brother and my are partners, okay. owners in the business. So your father was the owner? My father was the owner, and he sold a share to my brother and I, 20 some years ago and then my younger brother Willis became a partner when he got married and dad said I'll sell him my share when he gets married there were three of us brothers at the time about seven eight years ago my one brother we were doing another manufacturing thing in our facility he took that home he just wanted to have more free time and not have to be there when the business is open so he spun that off and then my brother it was my brother and I and then my son became a partner that's as he Josh? Got, that's Josh, as he got older. Okay. And he is very active, and he's just a super kid. Yeah, and he had excellent customer service because yeah. he just came up to me and was asking me. I think he, he didn't like my John Deere hat. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Understandably. So we got to get you in a tour. He, sh he should have given you a hat. <laughs> so anyway, we, we joked about that, but I did get him to concede that John Deere makes a good machine as well. But I, I love Toro. Yeah, uh, they have a good machine. There's oh, no absolutely. doubt. They, yeah. They're both uh, can make yeah. you 
a lot of money. Absolutely. Back to that customer service though. How did you train up your child to, to care so much about taking care of people? Cause that, that's rare you know, in our culture. It is. It's not as rare in our culture. And I also say that's an, a, that's a, a byproduct. A lot of people in our industry struggle tremendously with employees and we don't. And I think a lot of that is our culture. Okay, so as I told you before, we are Christians. We believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. It's not being Amish that's going to save us. Amish is a way of life. But when you're brought up this way and you appreciate it, we just have a more simple way of life. And we actually have a nicer life. We don't have the riffraff. Not that we don't get sucked into it. We do, but we don't have that riffraff. But I'm not asking, thinking you should be Amish. It's, that's not what I'm thinking. But I brought, was brought up this way, and it's a great family way of serving Christ. So I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Catholic. It's believing in Christ. But our way of life, the culture, breeds work ethics. When you're an Amish kid, you're not going to sit on a phone playing games. You're going to go outside. You're going to have chores to do. You'll have rabbits. You'll have ponies. You'll have goats. And you'll learn to work automatically. So you just don't have, in our culture, everybody works. So we don't have a problem with employees. It's natural. Now, to get him to the degree of customer service he has, I'd say it's a gift of the Lord. I, that's something I could not do. You know, we raised our kids the best we knew how. It's just a buy yes. It's just a blessing is all I can say because I'm no better than anybody else. Tell us a little bit. I'm from the big city, Atlanta, Georgia. In, Poor guy. I pity my, you. In my backyard... <laughs> In Gwinnett County, there's one million people just in the suburb of the city. The hustle, the bustle, yep, yep. Uh, certainly not honoring Christ and the culture and the morality of, of what's commonplace. Then I come out here. Last night I was driving home from your mm -hmm. uh, fine facility, and there's literally a horse and a buggy coming down the road. And I drove nice and slow, but I mean, I'm just this is foreign to me. So explain. I'm just curious about your culture. Do you drive a horse and buggy? I or? do. Really? You come to my house, I'll give you a ride. Are you serious? I'm it's a little serious. chilly out here. <laughs> yeah, I've, never, it's, I've never been in one. Yeah, absolutely. So, so do you have an F-150 or you, you drive the horse and buggy I to drive work? the horse and buggy. I, I walk to work. I live next door. I live as far as from here to those trucks out there from the shop you were in. Okay. I literally, it's it was a, dark last night, so I didn't see your right, house. Yeah, it's literally a 30-second a, a walk. And oh, my wow. son lives at the same distance across the street. And you guys just built homes there next to your... It was actually, my home was built in 73. We've remodeled numerous times. And my dad built the home. He moved when he got older and my son bought his home. So we're both like, we're next door neighbors and the shop is in between us. So we live right there. So we don't commute to work. We have employees that do. But if we go somewhere on weekends, Sundays to church, we use a horse and buggy. Now, if I go somewhere to the grocery store, if I go hunt, things like that, we have taxis. There's tons of dry taxis in Amish country. I'll just call and I'll say, hey, I need a ride. And they'll say, well, I can take you or I can't take you. And I'll call the next person like this morning to come to this facility. I did not bring the horse and buggy. <laughs> okay, it's a little chilly out there this morning. No, it's not. The, we have heaters. That's not oh, a problem. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, we can be just like this in the horse and buggy if you want to. It's, it takes too long. So we're still a time factor, not to your degree, but it's still a time factor. So we'll just hire a taxi and say, I need a ride to Worcester and I want to go back at this time and they're here. They'll just pick us up, take us home. And we'll just pay them. Wow. That's our life. We grew up with that. So you don't own a truck or a car? Uh, the business does. A couple okay. trucks for the company, but I don't drive them. If we drive them, it's not that I feel this is a sin that you have a truck, but if I start driving a truck, I will become a lot more busy mm -hmm. and I won't have the family life that we have. Wow. You just stay at home more or you go to your neighbors because it's close. We don't decide tonight. If we decide we go out to eat, we plan it. And then we'll go somewhere close with the horse or the bicycles. We use electric bicycles or we'll call the driver and go to Worcester to eat. But we don't go to eat every week because it's not the convenience but convenience brings more riffraff. I remember 20 some years ago, and I've never forgotten this, we had a customer, this was an older Amish gentleman standing at our counter looking at a billy goat vacuum. And this was a vacuum to suck up leaves. He said, this is disgusting. The more conveniences we have, the less time we have. Now you think about that. The more conveniences we have, and that goes to us, we have way more conveniences than we had 20 years ago, way more, as even in our culture. But the more conveniences we have, the less time we have. It just works that way. And wow. to a totally different degree in your world, and that's why we're Amish. 
Yeah. Now, do you have a cell phone or? I do, but not a smartphone. It's a call answering service. I don't even have a text phone. Not that I couldn't for the church. It's just, I don't want it. I just, you can email me and I can text from my computer at work, but my, I just, I don't want it. It so just takes more time. You're not, you don't have the apps of Facebook, Instagram, nope. TikTok. Zero. None of them? Zero. Nope. Wow. I don't want it. That's the culture. If we have that, we have less time. If we're at a family, if we're sitting at a table, if we're in the living room, there's nobody on their phones. My son might get a text and he might look at it and put, nobody's playing on a phone. We don't do that. Incredible. We are different. In a good way. <laughs> it's a personal choice. If you're brought up this way, you appreciate it and you like it. And I really do. It's just a nicer way to bring up a family, but it's not necessarily, it is the easy way if you're brought up this way, but it's, I wouldn't expect somebody that's not, to, like I said, it's not something that I think you should do. Yeah. I mean, it's okay if you want to, but it's certainly not well, for everybody. I, I don't want you to think I'm a heathen because I live in Atlanta, the no, 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 busy no, 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 city, no. but I it's don't, I, not, I do. Not in the least. I'm a Christian as well, and I've tried. That, that's all that matters. I try to honor Jesus with the way I live, but I will say what you mentioned, the traffic alone in Atlanta yeah. is frustrating. And yep. then on my phone, there's the YouTube, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's TikTok, there's all these apps that you can click on, and then it just that consumes your time. Yes. So And that's time that you're not meditating. If I'm driving down the road, I'm usually I'm meditating, I'm thinking everybody thinks. And that's not a sin. But you have to really balance your time to serve the Lord. And the best way to do that is get up in the morning. Do not turn on your phone. Do not look at your computer, but spend time in the Lord before you start your day. I've tried to preach that to people. What's your morning look like? What time uh, do you wake up? What do you do before you go to work? Generally, I wake up at about 4.15 and I spend time in meditation and prayer. Three mornings a week I run and I just do that because years ago a doctor told me you are not using your lungs and I started running just so I, because I don't, I'm in sales and I don't work physically. So uh, three mornings a week I run and I'm at work just a tad before six generally. That's when we open up and I'll spend that time having breakfast and just meditating, spending some time with my wife usually. She doesn't get up every morning that early, but most mornings she will. And we spend time together, and I don't like to be rushed in the morning. Absolutely, that is my time. Because usually when I go to work, I am on the computer, I have emails, the phone rings, you're with customers, and then it's just the day-to-day. -day. If I wait till the evening, I just don't get done what I want to get done. I have to do it in the morning. That's great. So what, what are you read the Bible in the morning? What yes, do you do? sir. I do read the Bible every morning, yes. You just read it out loud, or you just read it no. just in your... No, just silent. silent. And usually, like this morning, usually my wife and I will read, we'll pick a scripture and we'll read one verse together. I okay. usually read mine. I have my daily that I do. I usually follow a daily that I read several chapters myself. And I don't tell somebody you have to read the Bible every day. I just, I like that for myself. I like that time. What verse was it today? It was Romans 7 today. What was it? And it was, boy, you're being tough on me now. I read it out loud and I forgot. What does Romans 7 talk about? That's where Paul's talking about how wretched he is and how he messes up and how he gets mad that he does what he does. You're right. See, look at you. It is too. Yes, it's exactly what it is. Oh, wretched man that I am, I, I do what I don't want to do and what I want to do, I don't do. That's exactly right. Yes. Awesome. You are a Christian. Good for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. And like, no, but you know what? Don't say you're trying. You are one. It's not, you, we don't have to be perfect. We do not have to be perfect. That's why Christ came. We just have to understand the plan of salvation. Christ came into the world. He was born. He died for our sins on the cross. He rose. That's the plan of salvation. If we believe that, Paul says we will be saved. With that come good works. So we will, if we truly believe that, we will be good people, but we don't have to be perfect. Christ died for our sins. It's been very refreshing for me to come here because I have been getting very irritated with the traffic in mm -hmm. Atlanta. Just imagine millions of people trying to... <laughs> I, trust me, an Amish boy can't imagine that. <laughs> have you ever been to Atlanta? I have been through Atlanta one time just because we went that way to Florida or came back, and there's okay. like eight or ten lanes of traffic. On each side. It's like insane. It's like, and there's a lot of people there. How can these people live? And you can't. I mean, you can serve the Lord. I don't care where you live. 
and what denomination you belong to. That's not important to me. It's not that it's a bad place to live, but that life would not well, be me. Yeah, it's on my last nerve. I'm so frustrated living there. And then to come here and to see how slow it is and just calm. Now, there's a couple hundred people at this event. There's some hustle and bustle here, but I'm talking like outside those yeah. doors. Yeah. There's just a peace that we don't have in, in that city life. And then on a personal level, because I do have a smartphone and I do have YouTube app, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, internet, email, all of those, you just start clicking and the next thing you know, you're distracted. Consumed. Consumed. Yes, exactly. So this has been a humbling experience. I, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get my life on. I'm not, you're not going to convert me to a horse and buggy. <laughs> I like a Ford F-150. And I'm good with that. <laughs> but I, I want help to get um, untangled from the busyness because it's destroying me. You're doing it. Stand, get up each morning and give yourself time with the Lord. That is, if you do that, you'll be on the right track. You have to give yourself time. If you expect to live and we're all going to live for eternity in heaven or hell. You have to get up in the morning. I'm not saying you have to, but it'll be a lot easier to keep your life on track because as you get busy in the hustle and bustle, you'll say, you know what? And, or, and you'll, you'll catch yourself thinking of something you were praying about or something you read that'll be in your mind. It's like, oh, yeah. This is very good. Well, that's why I became a Christian in 2004, Ruben. I started seeing or like sensing how real hell was. Mm -hmm. Like I... I didn't go there. It became a reality that it's right. a real place. Yes. And I didn't want to take the chance. No. I just said, Jesus. It's not. It's forever. Yes. So I was like, do not let me go there. Whatever right. I got to do, I, yep. I put my faith in Jesus. I started living squeaky yep. clean or trying to. I don't want to go there. Right. It scared me so bad. Yes. And, and for somebody that doesn't know Jesus, just try him. Just try him. Say, if you're real, show me. Just show me. He will show you that he is real. I mean, he's there. He's not some myth or some fairy tale that won't show you. If you truly ask him, if you're real, show me, he will show you. He's not out to trick people. He's the real deal. And you could attest to this. Now, the, in the culture I was brought up in, I mean, I was taught on my mother's lap. and this, So I was in the culture you were brought up in. You would agree with me that your life is better since you're a believer. You're not saying it's necessarily an easier life. But it's so different because you feel good. You have peace. Yes. You can't have that peace without Jesus. Yes. The amount of peace that I have now compared to 2003 and prior, it's not even comparable. Right. It's, it's, it's exactly. impossible to even yes. the difference and the joy, many other benefits, the prosperity of, of yes. what I've experienced. Yes. People ask me, how did all this happen for you? And I was like, I have no idea. The Lord just set it yep. up so yep. easy. Yes. And it's the spirit. That peace is the spirit. Yes, very it's, well said. So how does that, Ruben, translate into running a business? How do you take that morning time, that faith, those morals, and then how do you run the, the biggest Toro dealer in America from that perspective? It's natural. You just do the right thing. And you know what's right. You know what's morally right. There's people that will take advantage of you at times. But you know what? Just let them take advantage of you. You'll get over that in no time. And you'll just try to avoid those people. If somebody truly wants to take advantage of you, I've told people, the Bible says clearly, given it will be given, taken it will be taken. Those people that take, they never, ever get ahead. Right. Never, ever get ahead. Because if they take, the Lord will take. If you think you can outtake the Lord, good luck. He can give you family sickness. He can do anything. Yeah, what's it been like working with Toro? They're one of the biggest companies in our industry What's that they are by far then? the biggest. They are by far the biggest company in this industry, and that's probably why if you walk into our dealership, and we've had people come in and say, "Is Toro all you sell?" And we'll say, "Yes, that's all we sell." But Toro is such an awesome, outstanding company to do business with. Toro has values just like we do, and I guess that's what makes it so great. The CEO of Toro, if you would sit at a table with him, you'd have no idea. He's the CEO of Toro. Rick Olson. He is, Rick Olson is that humble. You've met him? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I've had dinner with Rick more than really? once. Oh, yes. At your, my, at your house? Or? Not at my house. No, at meetings. My wife was at a motel but the, the day that they announced that he's going to be the CEO. We were at a uh, Toro convention on Omni Island. And my wife told me that day that she wants me to meet this guy 
that was so nice to her. The way this Omni Island, this motel was set up, it was very confusing. It was easy to get lost in, and I had gone to the seminars. My wife stayed in the motel, and she was trying to find her way out, and she met this guy on the hall, and he said, are you trying to find something? She said, yeah, I'm just trying to find if you just tell me how to get out of here. And he said, well, just follow me. I'll, tell, I'll show you where to go. And she said, no, just tell me. I'll find it. He said, no, just follow me. And he took her out completely. And she said, I just want you to meet this guy. He was just such a nice guy. Well, later on that day, she told me, and it was Rick Olson. He's just, and like I said, he does not scratch. He's a lot taller than we are. He's a tall fella. He's a tall fella, but he is as humble and as, he is a genuine Christian man. Very humble, Rick Olson is. Wow. He is awesome. There's a reason Toro's culture is what they are. And where I was going with this, if we have, if you had a Toro mower and something happened and it's out of warranty and this really should not have happened, this is not right, and this unit is a year out of warranty, if I call Toro and I explain it to them, it's not even a question if they stand behind that product. It is hands down done deal. They are by far the best provider in the industry for that. And people generally that are Toro customers, if they have a decent dealer, they will stay Toro customers. And that's why Toro is leaps and bounds ahead of everybody. They're way bigger than anybody in stand-on category, sit-down category. They just are the biggest. They're the leader. That's so cool to hear about Rick. I didn't get to have dinner with him like you, but I was in an elevator one time, and he's really tall. Oh, yes. And so my friend Naylor was like, that's Rick Olson. And I'm like, who's Rick Olson? He's like, the CEO of Toro. And I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. I think I got to shake his hand, but I, I didn't get to conversate with him much past that. But what was it like? Tell us about the dinner with him. They have round tables set up at conventions, and then they tell you where to sit. It's assigned seating. And I think they set the bigger dealers with you oh, know the, the bigger guys in the company. And I've yes, I've had dinner with him. But you just visit like we're visiting. It's, it's just He's just a genuine dude. And at the Toro meeting, there's nobody at those meetings that the Toro, the CEO and the, you know, the, the big guys at Toro, they don't stand together and talk. They stay with other people. They don't eat together. They converse. And if they didn't have Toro shirts on, you wouldn't know who they are. You'd never know. They're what we would consider big shots. They're not. They are just genuine people. Well, that's just, because he's a good leader. Yes. Some guys that do have the title and big shots, they let you know about it, but he's a servant. Right. He's a servant leader. And that goes back to Ken Melrose. Ken Melrose set that tone in 19. He took Toro from 1979 to bankruptcy in 10 years to a Fortune 500 company. Ken Melrose set that tone. And so you had a Ken Melrose, you had a Mike Hoffman, which was just the same thing, just a servant leader. And then you have that followed up with Rick Olson. Just, he used to be a management, I believe, at Exmark mm -hmm. Mowers, and they moved over. Yeah. Toro owns X. Right. Yes. And for that reason, we are just a Toro dealer. We just have no desire. Now, if we'd ever see something that we would be change course, because obviously that's our business. If we would see something alarming, we've obviously had the opportunity to take, I think, every brand under the sun. And we just always say no. If we would see something alarming, then we would definitely chump ship or at least have another brand as a backup, but we just have no desire for that. Switching to the power equipment side and, and the other accessories you have, what, what else do you guys do, or is it predominantly just mowers? Uh, mowers is by far our number one thing, but then we, ha we also carry steel and Honda for our customers. So it's steel for two-cycle, it's Toro for lawnmowers, and then Honda for generators. Generators is big in our industry okay, because we're Amish, so we use generators oh, okay. for power or to back up battery banks because we don't use power off the line if you didn't know that. So we make our own power. I did not know that. Yes. I'm learning a lot. You don't have a Ford F-150, you have a horse and buggy. Yes, I do. You don't have electricity coming off the line. Not off the line. You have it coming through a generator. So we have a battery bank like a lot of people talk about, letting me off the grid. We do that. That's just, we always have. I have a battery system. And so if you'd walk into my house, I have lights like you do. It's off of a battery off of solar and then we have a battery backup if my battery gets low a generator that's on natural gas will start up charge the battery so if i want to go off the grid eventually i want to get out to the country get off the grid maybe not it's kind of cold up here maybe in the south i would need to buy a generator yes well in the south you might not have to no but we have a lot of days just like this where the sun don't shine like the sun oh, I see. yesterday we had some sunshine that was the first day in I don't know how many that the I sun. prayed. I asked the Lord, Ruben, my two things, because I was coming up here and I don't like snow and icy roads and stuff. So I asked the Lord, 
I said, I want sunny skies with no clouds when I get there and no snow or transportation on the ground. And I flew into Cleveland and I got out. And for what I understand, it's cloudy a lot here. Dude. And I got off the airplane and I said, thank you, God, because there was not one cloud in the sky. It was light blue skies and you know, there was no snow. And, I, and he answered my prayer. And exactly. you know what? You know what? I was so amazed to see clear skies yesterday. I have a forecaster. Every day on that forecaster showed no sun. I could not believe we had clear skies yesterday. We talked about it. We said it was the cloudy. Our forecast was completely cloudy, and here we have clear skies, and look at that. I literally asked the Lord specifically. I just said, I, I want no cloud. I want to look in the sky and just see blue, no see? clouds. And he, that's why I that's said, how- if you want to know if he's real, that's, that's exactly... I've had experiences like that time and time and time again in my life. If you want to know if he's real, he's real. Yeah, and it wasn't that. It was my, my second prayer was I, I want to drive. I don't want snow and ice and all that stuff to be on the roads because I had a rental mm-hmm. uh, truck. That can be dangerous in those con- conditions. So I specifically asked the Lord, no precipitation, snow, and clear skies. And for those listening who don't understand Ohio weather, in Phoenix, Arizona, or San Diego, maybe that's normal. But that's not normal up here. No, it's not. It was an act of God answering my prayer. It's wild. Yeah, that is because driving in snow is actually fun if you're used to it. I know coming from the south and not having snow, it is. You use the gas pedal. You go easy, and you have four-wheel drive, and you ease into it, and you back off of it. But if you just go drive like you do on dry, then it is dangerous because your truck will go flying around. It's normal. You don't think about it here. If it gets icy, you keep right on going. Now, icy, that's a little bit more tricky, but... But snow is nothing, nothing to worry about. My point was God answered my yes. very detailed prayer to the T. That's fantastic. Pretty, pretty cool. Well, is there anything else you want to share with our audience about sleigh ball engines or about the culture that you've created and sustained? Oh, I think we've pretty much covered it. Not unless you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer well, them. Well, I'll ask one last question on a personal, because this has been... Ruben, a struggle of mine for a while. It's the Atlanta traffic. It's the influence. I There are a lot of people that will watch our conversation and, and listen to the podcast and things of that nature. So I justify being on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatnot, because there's literally hundreds of thousands of people that connect sure. mil- millions in a given month, I was looking on Facebook, we had over 8 million accounts we reached last month. This That's awesome. This podcast, it's yep. the most listened to podcast in the lawn and landscape industry. That you know, We do, we work with John Deere and uh-huh. Toro sure. and Echo and Kohler Engines and so, mm-hmm. so many of these companies. So the justification is because the opportunity and to partner with these influence the it's generated wealth, you know, sure. prosperity. I justify being involved in that. But it also is pulling me away from the Lord with busyness and distraction. Well, and that's where you, what you have to balance. There's no, there's no sin in doing what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a job. You just have to balance it so you don't spend more time with this. Because if we spend more time, and if, you spend, if you're spending more time with this, then you are, I don't want to say then you are with the Lord. No, it's a job. So you have to have family and faith first. That there's nothing wrong with having this as a job. You just can't let this be an idol because I don't care if it's an F-150. If you like an F-150 more than the Lord, then the F-150 is an idol. An F-150 wow. is not an idol. I don't care what you have. A business is not an idol. This is a business just like our business is. If that's an idol, if I would worship our business more than the Lord, then that's an idol. It wow. doesn't matter what it is. That's very well said. Well, I really appreciate it, Ruben. It's a, it's a blessing to, to meet you, and, and thank you for the encouragement. Awesome to meet you.